Hi, welcome to the Knitting Samurai Plus One video podcast. This is episode 65, He's Two, and I'm your host, Steph, also known as the Knitting Samurai over on Ravelry. Welcome! <laughs> it feels like forever since we last spoke. As you can see, I am back home, probably recording at either your favorite or least favorite time of day. Um, it's in the evening, it's dark outside, so you get no backlight. And, but at the same time, you also get a semi-tired Stephanie who gets tongue-tied sometimes. So, <laughs> that's how it goes. So, it has been a crazy 10 days or so since we last talked, um, spoke, whatever, since I talked at you and you listened. So politely, you guys are just awesome. Thank you so much. The RAV board is just blowing up. I love all the conversations going on over there. I know everybody's super excited for the Inspiration Die Works 100th episode anniversary, whatever, celebration, 100th episode celebration to begin. So it's great. It's great to see everybody just interacting. And if you're not a member of the group, please join. We are almost at a thousand. How awesome is that? And I just, I'm happy. <laughs> so um, roll in turn two. I will tell you about that in a little bit. Um, oh my God. And there's so much to tell you. Oh my God. Okay. <laughs> I'm just writing down some things I thought of that I forgot when I was writing. So let's start with doing the prize drawing for what's your favorite project this month uh, for the month of August. So this is a skein of Highland Handmade Silver Maple Sock Yarn in the gorgeous colorway Loki's Whim. And I have like 85 tabs open here. We had 45 people put in and I'm gonna go to my random number generator and say two through 45, generate, and there you go, number 38, if that's you, you just won. So let's hop back over to Rav, page two, number 38, it better not be a chatty Stephanie, whoop, is Allison J. <laughs> Allison says, I'm going to show off your stuff. She's knitting a pair of socks. And she says, I love knitting for my husband because he is so appreciate, appreciative. They, these are his birthday, or for his birthday, which was yesterday. Good thing it's still too warm for wool socks here. Or he might be complaining that there's, they are not done yet. See, tired, can't read. <laughs> I think this is the fourth pair I've made for him, for him from this pattern. Because he loves them so much. They are so almost done, Allison. I bet by the time, let's see, that was the 28th. They must be done by now. Let us know. <laughs> so uh, shoot me a PM and I'll drop this in the menu. For, oh, I meant to grab it. Uh, oh my God. I'm so savvy. I know, I know. It astounds you. For next month, the prize drawing will be, I wrote September 10. It is September 10. The drawing will be October 10. And it will be for this skein of Knitty and Color. This is called her Secret Spirits. It's about 400 yards of Superwash Merino Nylon 80-20. I believe this was, no, this wasn't. It's crazy bright happy to share it with you so um i'll open a new thread and post your projects in there keep adding to my queue that's what i do that's what i do <laughs> every time i go in that thread so um i've gotten a few messages recently from people asking me to share information on the podcast and i'm so, so sorry melee bella i've missed you your walk was last weekend and i didn't get to announce it so i'm really really sorry about that um I am super happy to share all the information to keep the knitting community going and just get the word out about anything. So if you have something you'd like me to share, drop me a note and I'll, I'll, I'll share it. <laughs> but um, first up, Allison, who is a Texas yarn um, 
gifted me a pattern or sent me her a little help from my friends her sock pattern that's raising money for bladder cancer oh you don't really want that there you go I'm sure you've heard about this pattern everywhere she is very diligent about getting the word out there but here's what I'm gonna do the first three people who put a comment on this episode's thread saying that they would like the pattern I'm going to gift it to you so if you're watching this pause go see if you're in the top three first three people to put a comment if you would like to knit these lovely socks go over and I will gift it to you so there you go um, secondly Emily who is chain of fools has published her herbaceous socks I have been ogling them on her podcast which is fiber town but it's f-i-b-r-e instead of e-r fiber town um, it's very cute I like watching her show so she's published her socks first pattern they are gorgeous I have them on here as well to show you um, I'm not sure uh, they're gorgeous Emily lovely lovely job I'm not sure if I will knit them because I went through my heavily patterned stage and on socks and I'm kind of over that but tell me would you be insulted if I turn them into mittens I think they would make gorgeous mittens and I'm happy to put patterning on my hands versus my feet I am so on a vanilla sock kick it's not even fun but I do thank you very much for sharing your pattern with me and the heel on that is a different construction than I've seen before so I might I don't know we'll see we'll see see how motivated I get I have not been super motivated these last few days um so now is the point in the show where I talk about projects I'm not going to show you. <laughs> I went to London and did on portable projects. I came home and realized I had a baby shower in like nine days and needed to finish knitting Amy's baby blanket for that. I knit on that exclusively for nine days while dealing with this head cold that I'm sticking my head in the sand and saying I don't have a sinus infection, but I'm on like day 16, 17 of this cold. So either it's allergies, which I started taking allergy meds yesterday, over the counter, and stuff. Um, I started that and it's getting better. It's getting better every day, a little tiny bit better. <laughs> but anyway, so uh, my knitting time has not been what it normally is because I've just been tired and run down and not feeling great in the evenings so that blanket was such a slog so this is the um, cousin smiter square baby blanket by Emily Payne I knit it with lime brand cotton ease in the colors lime berry violet and lake on US size 8 5.0 millimeter needles I'm gonna insert some pictures we did have the baby shower today it was finished in time the recipient Amy was so thrilled with it Amy doesn't know what she's having and I was kind of nervous the main color was the lime on the blanket right you could see that I was kind of nervous that it just it was gonna be not neutral enough with the pink and the violet woven in and that's why I put the blue border to try and make it more neutral to pull it a little more masculine whatever she is she loves it she's the most appreciative and I knew she would be because she's a knitter Of the four co-workers having babies she was the one that was like oh my god I love it so Jamie's baby shower is next week I finished her blanket Memorial Day yeah Memorial Day weekend so hers is all done ready to go um, thank goodness right <laughs> no more crunch deadlines I ended up staying up until midnight on Saturday night knitting I had about half of the blanket to go it's a really fun knit it's just the crunch the time crunch so I stayed up till midnight, which is late for me. I'm like 9.30 <laughs> normally. So then As Sunday, I got up, worked with the new video software, which, oh, is so not easy to learn new software. Let me tell you, I'm getting old or something or curmudgeonly or I don't know. 
insert your insult here as to why I don't appreciate new technology that the buttons are not where I want them to be and I have to go to help menus and every day everything takes three times as long because I'm trying to figure out how to do what I could do in two minutes so I was working with the software <laughs> and at like eight o'clock when Roland got up Steve was up and he just took care of Roland all day so I could knit everything just he did it and I knit like crazy so it was a team effort to get that blanket done but it was done and it, it was blocking Monday and packaged up Monday night and off to the baby shower today so yay happy endings um so that's one thing the other well, the second project that I'm not going to show you that I'm working on is the Asilomar by Amy Hartzog. It's a sweater. You've seen it. I've been talking about it for a while. Here's the front page of the pattern. It's glorious. Mine is um, a more of a violet steel gray. It's a darker shade of gray than that one. It's an awesome pattern. I love it. I just need to knit the left front panel. I could probably do it in six or eight hours. U.S. size sevens. Um, Cascade 220 Heathers is the yarn I'm using. Did I say US size 7? So it's pretty easy, pretty big needles, flies right along. I love the patterning. I made some mods to the front panel, so I, I will have to follow that when I do it, but to the right front panel, but I just need to buckle down and do it. And the cats are having a fight <laughs> next to me. You know, cat fight, where they do this, but don't actually hit each other. You guys are killing me with your cute cats, by the way. Oh. <laughs> Renee, no, not Renee, Raylan, and someone put up this gorgeous cream little bit fur baby kitten. Oh, so cute. Anyways, okay, no, I can't have another cat. Um, so yeah, so the Asilomar, I didn't work on it in London, so that was like five days. I didn't work on it the last nine days because I was on baby blanket crunch duty. So I just need to get back into it. So please, please, please let this be motivating enough sitting here talking to you about it that I pull it out and get back to it. Um, last piece of knitting that I'm not really gonna show you. I mean, I am, but. Uh, oh, this is a new bag. I purchased my first Stitch by Jessalou bag. And this one is, um, some amount of the proceeds goes to breast cancer awareness. It's very cute with the pink ribbon fabric inside. I love her handles are very nicely made and the the um, label sewn on. I like that. I think it, it, they're really nice bags. I've not had one before. Mm -hmm. Heather, I'm looking at you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the knit along <laughs> is supposed to start is supposed to start September 15th, but some of us got our yarn early and we're excited to start, Heather, from, I believe it's Knits and Things podcast. Um, <laughs> it cast on a little early. The, the, I see no, I'm not a stickler, whatever. If you want to cast on early, go ahead, but don't make our friends overseas feel left out because it's taking a little longer for them to get their yarn. That's why Laura and I picked the 15th was that it would give, I think, two weeks for international shipping to get there from the last pre-order date, which by the way, if you did not pre-order yarn and you're not really set on knitting it on the start date, but you think that this is a gorgeous skein of yarn, Laura is still selling skeins of it. Inspiration Dye Works. She has an Etsy shop. She has lots of great yarn in there. Perhaps I ordered some more. <laughs> Perhaps I just had a custom dye of a sweater's worth done for me. I know, it's a fluffy plus. I don't think it's a plus. I think it's just fluffy that I had the sweater worth done because it doesn't have nylon in it. But this one is, oh, and this is the fluffy. I've not knit with it, so I thought I should try it. It is a two-ply fingering weight, and this is her turquoise thunder colorway. Not at all related to the knit along, but I was thinking about it, so I thought I should wear She's great color sense. Are you surprised, this teal? <laughs> anyway, so here is um, my skein. And I was wandering around aimless last night, let me just tell you. After the blanket was, you know, all the, I'm, this clock, I have a set, um, I'll tell you, it's not a clock, it's a camera. And you're set to the HD setting, because I'm trying out recording a bigger file to start with, but then the new software will take it down to whatever size Blip needs. So I, I don't know if it'll make better video quality, but I thought I'd try it. But it can only record in like small segments. So 
I'm watching my timer. I know, you love it when I don't pay attention to you. We'll see. But, um, so last night I was wandering around aimlessly, like, what do I do? What do I knit on? I don't know what to knit on. And nothing was speaking to me. And I should have just listened to my Miss Winkle, because I like knitting that, which is what I eventually ended up knitting. But I started that much of a provisional cast on. It took me like three tries to do it. And started working on the prism loop. I don't know if this is gonna, gonna fly. And then I felt guilty. That's the real reason I put it down. I did the cast on, I started, got halfway through one row, and was like, mm -mm, I don't know if I should be doing this. <laughs> so I felt guilty for breaking my own rules. <laughs> Plus, I wanna see more progress on Heather's. So I need to go look at the podcast, watch, see where she's at with that. But join in, the knit along is gonna run until um, Halloween. So September 15th or ish until Halloween and Inspiration Dye Works is going to, has offered up a gift certificate for a skein of yarn of your choosing, I believe, or maybe it's just a gift certificate and you can buy something out of the shop. I don't know. She's very flexible. Um, and I will be offering up a couple patterns of your choosing. So let's knit along. I'm so excited to see all the things that people are talking about now. So also new bags. I got a few new bags recently. This is one of them. This is a massive bird leg bags, bird legs bag. So I have a couple, one or two, two of her box bags. My camper bag is the one I most frequently use. I also have a um, Dr. Who TARDIS one. Um, sorry, I just remembered. <laughs> Pacific Room will be coming out soon. Okay, sorry, yes. Uh, so this is her, the Sherlock Holmes bag, and I love it. It has houndstooth fabric on the inside, this great long draw cord, really cute houndstooth over here as well. It's it's so well made. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I used this. I was toting around the baby blanket in it while I finished, so it's definitely good size because that was like four skeins of yarn plus the blanket itself in here, so that was great. And then I also got... Um, this. So, <laughs> I want to paint a wall in my house this color. Seriously, like, can I somehow sponge to make it like the, because a, a lot of our walls when we bought the house were very textured. And I've painted over quite a few of them, but like this wall over here, eh, I don't know if you could see it, but that's like two tones. Our bedroom is two tones. They're, it's like tonal, variegated not variegated, tonal yarn. If our walls were kettle dyed, that's how they'd look. Anyway, um, I saw this bag and I wasn't really interested in a wedge. I wanted to try her big wedge because I needed a, a large sweater size, blanket size bag, but I wasn't really interested in, in a second wedge. I spent, I think, 24 hours hemming and hawing and oh, what do I do, what do I do? And then finally I was like, you know what? This is your old favorite color and your new favorite color. and it's, I love this bag. It has been sitting on my countertop. It has things in it, but not an actual knitting project. It has, um, money. London yarn. Also, can I say that I bought 400 yards of an Aran weight to knit a baby sweater? Good luck finding a baby sweater you can knit with 400 yards. So I don't know what I'm going to make with Roland's yarn, but it'll have to be something. Anyways. Gorgeous. So this has just been sitting with me looking at it going, I love you. I love you. <laughs> so that's new. That's new. That's new. I showed you the yarn. Last new thing. I am in the Fiber Nymph Dye Works Club. Ah, can't think of the name of it. It's something 2.0. Anyways, I chose to go with the sport weight for the yarn. And this is her color of happiness. So this is 100% superwash merino. It's so pretty. It wants to be something for a baby girl. You know it. You know it. So that also came in the mail this week. And that's 274 yards. I feel like I have... Oh, wait. She put an abbreviation on it. Knitter's Choice Yarn Club version 2.0. August colorway. There you go. Uh, I did. I choked, went with the sport weight because I feel like that's probably the base I knit with the least. I have the... Or the weight yarn and it was the least I have the least of it in my stash I have a ton of fingering weight yarn so let's get some sport weight because I really want it to be
All right, and then next, let's talk about my Neural Handshake socks. Start the timer, okay, go. Um, these are Inspiration Dye Works knit on US size zeros, 2.0 millimeter needles. I've been knitting socks on zeros without knowing I was, so now I know I am, because I measured them. Um, this was Inspiration Dye Works. This was to keep me busy and away from my Knitting Samurai Plus One colorway. So I worked on these quite a bit on the flight home. Um, there were people on the plane with a little child that were refusing to give it a bottle or um, a pacifier of any sort. And this was an older baby. This was like a six month old baby. And we hit turbulence and the plane was just like up and down, up and down while they tried to find a safe spot. It's like a nightmare scenario. A child is crying. I can't do anything about it and I'm strapped in. <laughs> Yes, in fact, that is what my hell would be like. I probably have to untangle yarn while I'm at it. Like, <laughs> yeah. So, worked on these. I'm about ready to start one by one ribbing over here. I have this much left of that piece of skein, that bit of skein. So, half of the skein, yeah. So, they should be done next week. They should have been done this week, but they're not. So, mm, it happens. And then, Lastly, Miss Winkle by Martina Bem. Oh yeah, oh yeah, everybody's doing this. I think Diane of the Knittables podcast is hosting a knit along. So if you see other people and you're interested and you want to knit one, you go over there and join Diane. Here is what the pattern looks like. And this is um, the suggested yarn. This may be why I had to cast it on. Is um, Miss Yauza? Miss, no, it's not Yauza. It's Miss Babs Deep Sea Jellyfish, which is my favorite of her colorways, but I'm saving mine. I need to get a second one so I can save mine and then knit with one. I know it's ridiculous, but it's true. So I am knitting with, even though I have the yarn in the colorway, <laughs> I'm knitting with um, Sparkle Gnome by Gnome Acres. And this is her Gnome on Fire colorway. And I have 17 completed loops. So it's a really pretty color. Oh, you can see I had to break the yarn because yes, I did have a tangled mess. Like Roland helped me wind this and the mommy winds fast, Roland winds slow. Just made a knot in the middle of the skein. So I had to break off a bunch of it, but that's okay. It'll still be a glorious sparkly shawl when I'm done really like it. I like this, um, that blue color, blue purple. I don't know. And I'm, I was just looking at it. So these loops are a little bit tricky. Nope. That's the right way. Uh, yep. They're all right still. Um, some, I did notice that these two are bigger than the others. I think I did two extra rows on them and I was well past them when I realized that. But at the same time, I know I knit those two loops laying in bed in London at like 12 o'clock their time being like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm still awake. <laughs> so I was knitting that watching CSI, relax. So it's kind of, it's what it's supposed to be, right? And then this is my perfectly matched pitta loop, pitta loop bag. So that's it for knitting. That's it, that's all I have to tell you. Oh my God, kick me in the butt, get my butt in gear. Um, should we talk about things that are going on in my life? Because it's crazy time. So, we'll start with um, Labor Day weekend. So, that's Roland's birthday weekend. Hmm? Uh, <laughs> he turned two. It was a lot of fun. I can show you some pictures. Do you like the shirt I had made for him? Row, row, two! 
He was so funny running around pointing to himself. Almo Roro. Almo Roro. Really cute. He still doesn't know he's two. Like, my mom was talking to us on speakerphone in the car today. And she's like, Roland, how old are you? One, two, one, two. <laughs> one, two are his favorite words right now. They must be pushing that really hard at school because daycare because he is just like all about the counting. But he doesn't really understand it. So he's like, one truck. And then there'll be like two buses and he just yells two buses. It's like, well, you were counting, but whatever. He's happy. It's, it's very cute. So that was then. Uh, Thursday night, so rewind to last Thursday night, Steve and I made an incredibly long trip to Mohegan Sun. I had no idea how far away that was. There was a concert there of Fall Out Boy. It's a band that... Um, I have always said that U2 and Fall Out Boy are the two bands in my generation, my generation, that I would like to see. I know Fall Out Boy, you're like, what? I know, but I really like them. I own all of their discs and know every single song. So we made this drive. There was a concert the next day in Lowell. This is much closer to us, but I've never been to Mohegan Sun and it was the first night of the tour. So I wanted to get them while they were fresh. So we saw 21 Pilots. Um, Panic at the Disco, oh, some new song, and uh, Fall Out Boy. Fall Out Boy was not as exciting as I would have liked. They are definitely uh, songwriters, rockers, and not entertainers. Panic at the Disco, very much entertainers. Like, he, they were fun to watch. It was a great concert. We had a great time. My parents took care of Roland. We went to the show, which was in the um, arena, which is in the casino, which is in the hotel is on top of. So we had dinner and drinks before, we saw the show, left the show. It was opening night of football season. So we went to a bar and stayed up really late and watched the football game on the TV. And we're just like, this is what it's like to be kid free. It was so fun. And then we just walked up to our room. Nobody had to drive. So great time there. The next morning we got up. Steve went to play at the casino. I did some shopping. We left around noon, got home, hung out with my mom and Roland and played. And my mom left. And three hours later, it's bedtime. And Steve's getting ready, helping Roland get ready for bed. I had to do a little bit of work. This is Friday night. And as Steve is getting rolling ready for bed, I hear thud in the shower, in the bathroom, and then I hear my name. <laughs> and so I go flying in there. Roland fell. He cut his forehead. Roland falls a lot. He's a boy. He's crazy active. Cut his forehead. And so I immediately, you know, pressure and towels. And of course, all of our towels are white. We have some like old green towels, which I was quick enough to grab those but anyways towels and Steve got him Tylenol and then we stood there and we argued and Steve was saying take him to the hospital and I was saying no it's no worse than the scratch he had on his chin and that's healed fine and Steve was like it's on his face we're taking him so we end up um, going to the hospital long story short they asked me three times before they actually put in the stitches if I was sure I wanted to be in the room and I was like, yes, I'll be fine, I'll be fine. I don't know that I could do that again. <laughs> it was very hard to watch, and I'm not queasy, but someone getting their face sewn up is just out there. Um, Steve had stitches on his chin like six years ago, so he was very in touch with what it was going to feel like for Roland, and, you know, very reassuring that, yes, he's screaming bloody murder, but he can't feel anything, and that's what the doctors were saying, like, he could feel the tugging, but he's okay. And so it took three people to administer the stitches with me standing there rubbing, I was the fourth person, rubbing his chest and his legs because they had him wrapped up in a blanket, um, just trying to reassure him. And the minute they stopped and let him sit up, he stopped crying. And he looked at me and it was like, pick me up, you know, let me out of here, let's go home. So.
my poor boy had stitches. I know. So it took us about two hours. And we came home and we had milk and cookies and we read a story and we went to bed. So that's what you do. <laughs> so I think that is my full week. Yeah, so that was Friday and then crazy knitting on Saturday and Sunday. And Monday was Monday in a retail environment, so it's busy. And Tuesday was crazy, that was today, and now here I am with you, being tired, but so happy to have sat here and talked to you and caught up a little bit. Um, I need to put some time in on the boards and see what y'all are doing, because I love it, love it, love it. Um, yeah, that was part of my Friday morning at the casino when I got up, I laid in bed and, you know, had my iPad with me, just commenting and just looking around. It's fun, it's fun to have free time. Imagine that. So... I hope you have a great 10 days or so until I see you again. Take care. Happy knitting. Mwah!